All right. Um, well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Rebecca Murphy, and I'm the Coastal Program Manager at the Northern Virginia Regional Commission. Um, I'm joined by my coworker, uh, Dale Medeiros. Um, and the, for those unfamiliar with NVRC, we are a regional council of 13 local governments spanning from Prince William up to Loudoun County in Northern Virginia. For more information about the commission, you can visit novaregion.org. Um, but today we are so pleased to present a webinar on the story of the organization Neckar Insel um, and the regeneration of a severely degraded section of the Neckar River watershed through innovative planning, design, um, and development. Just to give a very brief background on this project, since 2022, with the support from the German Federal Ministry of Housing and Urban Development and in partnerships with the Verban Region Stuttgart, the Neckar Insel highlights a unique grassroots effort that has resulted in various social, artistic, culinary, as well as environmental and sustainability focused initiatives in the Verban Region. From the development and model of this organization, I think we can gain a number of interesting practices and models and innovative frameworks for the renewal of watersheds in the United States, including those um, within Northern Virginia in particular. And so to share this information, we are joined by Christine Von Raven and Elmer Gutierrez just provide some information on both of them. Christine is the co-founder of the social startup firm Agency Apero and the nonprofit Neckar Insel, where she developed strategies for integrated water planning in cooperation with Verbond Region Stuttgart and implements urban experience experiments in public space. She also has worked at Transsolar Klima Engineering since 2017 and develops holistic climate and energy concepts for the building sector. And she also studies climate neutral cities. Overall, she is a trained architect um, and her work has focused on sustainable and urban development with a particular interest in water, energy and public space. She also spent a year at the University of Oregon on a Fulbright scholarship where she also had the opportunity to study uh, sustainable design. We're also joined by Elmer, who is an architectural designer and planner working in Stuttgart. He has collaborated with Neckar Insel since 2022 and has a uh, very lengthy experience as a sustainable sustainability consultant in Transsolar Stuttgart from 2017 to 2020. Notably, he completed his bachelor's studies in Peru and Madrid and has and focused his master's studies in architecture and sustainability in Peru. So thank you both for being here today to present. Um, before we get going, just a few housekeeping rules to keep in mind. Um, today's Zoom is in webinar format, so to involve as many of you as possible for discussion and questions, we ask that you put any questions or comments in the Q&A box um, during the presentation, and we'll take time at the end to respond and take you off mute if needed. Um, please also note that this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be uploaded to NBRC's YouTube and uh, website after the event. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Christine and Elmer to get going. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, okay, let's share the screen and get started here. So we hope you're all seeing the screen now. Perfect. Yeah, thank you very much for having us. We're really happy to share um, what we're doing here along the NECAR. And we're also very curious about your questions and your context on the other side of the Atlantic. Yes, uh, we both are part of the NECA Insel, NECA Island team. Um, and we'll give you an insight of what drives us, who are we, um, what are we actually doing? and also a bit of how we're organized because it's also a bit of a complex um, come together of events, uh, fundings and people. Yeah, let's get right away started. Who are we and what drives us? Um, this is the Necker Island team. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization. 
Um, we founded ourselves officially last year, but later more about that. We're a group of people, uh, different fields, a lot of rather young people in our age, but also everyone else who's interested in, in, in designing and rethinking the NECAR can join. We're an open group. And what um, combines our all like interest is definitely um, the water and we wanna swim later more about that. But also the climate crisis or something is uh, bothering us all. Um, I guess uh, nothing, not a lot of news to tell, but for us it's also very obvious. We have a lot of problems with water and it's uh, becoming more and more severe through the climate crisis. We have either not enough water. Here's a picture of Stuttgart on the left. You see the Neckar Island already. Later more pictures about that. Um, like, yes. and. This is the one side, if it's not enough water, or as you can see here, it's way too much water. We just had like two weeks ago, a very severe flooding stormwater event in South Germany. People died. It was a very, very sad event. In Stuttgart, we were still lucky. Um, not a lot of damage, but here you can see the island being flooded um, in this space. That the water is a huge potential and gives us also some problems. You can also see in this regional scale, we'll, we'll look at this later again. Um, you can see the entire region of um, Stuttgart. Like, where's my mouse? Can I show it? Yes. Ah, here it is. Perfect. This blue line here, this is the Neckar. Here we have the city of Stuttgart, and this is the point where the Neckar Island is. What you can see in the background, the reddish um, background is the more red, the bigger the heat stress in the region is. And you can see really nicely on this map how along the Neckar and the other rivers going into the Neckar are also within the hottest areas of the region. So we see here how our rivers are really big challenge. It's a lot really hot, but of course, since we have the water, it's a huge potential we want to activate. Here in Stuttgart and here in the middle, you can see the, the island we talk about or rather not see. You see it's like a lot of infrastructure. This is the Neckar today in Stuttgart. It's like fully like surrounded by infrastructure, by bridges for trains. Here you have the, the, the main roads. Um, in the back, you see a lot of industry. Um, here in the background, you also see Mercedes-Benz, the headquarter and the stadium, and we will see from the other side, but also here we can see it's like not giving and not making a lot out of the potential the river could have, so this is what we want to change. So now we're going to continue uh, with um, uh, showing what is our goal and uh, what are we doing in the NECAR. So we have, a, of course, we have set up as a long-term goal, which is we want to swim. This, um, we want to create a cooperative and sustainable, uh, radical positive redesign of the net car. But of course, um, there are some short-term uh, goals that we have to set in order for this to happen, uh, which is creating a space for knowledge exchange experience uh, for the city and by, by the water. So we're gonna start focusing on the space. So we are located here. You can see this is where we are. And this is the Fabantri in Stuttgart. This is the main station of Stuttgart. And from Stuttgart, we have like a very long green area that uh, welcomes us to the Neckar Insel. Plus we have also the beginning of um, this urban development that is called Bad Cannstatt. And also we have the, as Tina said, the Mercedes-Benz uh, headquarters here down and the football stadium. So we are in a very vibrant, very strategic position. And of course, along the Neckar. Um, so yeah, this is the space that we have. Uh, as we saw on the other picture, we're currently under some bridges. Uh, this used to be a very secluded space. There was uh, nothing like we can see right now here. There were no um containers for the deck that we have right now uh which leads us to uh the space that we created how we created and um yeah it was a collaborative space a uh, collaborative design we all worked on this to become what it is so we ended up doing or having a container uh, a deck 
Uh, so we prepared basically the space for it to hold as many possibilities in the future for public space. And one of them is, yeah, like this container where we hold sometimes some events inside. Uh, we also collaborated in creating all of these uh, elements of the container, like this round um, window, which was uh, manufactured by one of uh, the people that collaborated with us in Neckar Insel. We painted it, we did everything on it uh, to be what it is right now. Uh, we are not only uh, talking about this space as a physical space, but we also have a space for water, uh, which is uh, leads us to this project, uh, which happens on top of the containers, which is using the water of the Neckar to be naturally filtered uh, by this green um, area on top of the uh, on top of the containers, which can then be used by people here. So it's also a place of experiment with water. We not only have the water with us, but also we are um, providing and collecting our own energy with secondhand PV panels. Uh, as I said, it's not only a physical space what we're creating, but we're creating a space for knowledge. Uh, knowledge that we are giving by, for example, these events that we have in the install, which is which are the tours, uh, where we are giving the information about the insel, about the water, about anything that is related to this space, to people around us or people who are visiting us. Because most uh, what we have uh, find out is that a lot of people do not have too much knowledge about the Neckar. So these are the ways that we are finding to provide them with this knowledge. It's a very interactive, actually, uh, a very interactive way to do it. Uh, we are also providing knowledge by uh, having this um, furniture that we have also developed, uh, which is, for example, this one in the left side is a small library that we have with topics related to water, uh, information that varies from kids' books, uh, scientific books, uh, tales, history of the Neckar, we have everything here and everyone can come and always read them. Then we also uh, prepare flyers. Also all these flyers and all of the information is being prepared by our team. Uh, even the graphic design is prepared by our team. So everything is made in the uh, voluntary and kind of like working together way. Um, and also we have and provide the knowledge, uh, not only in physical ways have you, uh, as you have seen, but we are also providing them uh, in the website. So in our website, we have this uh, area, which is in the moment in German, but it's like the business pool, which is the knowledge pool, uh, where every, every single um, document that we are using for our knowledge, uh, we are also sharing it here. So we are not keeping the knowledge only to ourselves. We are also show, uh, sharing this knowledge uh, in our website for everyone to use, to kind of like know everything that we also uh, get to know every day. Uh, along with this knowledge, we are also um, preparing some um, water quality measurements for the, for the uh, insect because it is uh, for us very important to have the actual information on the uh, uh, water quality of the Neckar and not only be based on assumptions or on, on the looks that it might not look so nice or the water is like this or that. We have or we want to give the right information uh, about the water quality. That's why we are running this um, this test. And now Tine, relax. Exactly. We now we give you some insights in our knowledge pool and what we're just figuring out. Uh, the question about why we cannot swim in the Neckar is a broad thing. We saw it's a security thing and the first picture you see like it's not really accessible. It's a bit dangerous and of course there are areas because of the infrastructure we cannot swim but they are also a bit nicer spots where it's easy um, to access the water. But then there's still the problem with the water quality. Um, so we did a lot of research and how is the water, what do people say about the water quality, what is affecting the water quality. And um, it's probably um, similar to for you that all the infrastructure that we have, the rivers being an infrastructure element of our sewing system, the end of our sewage system, and that after 
um, the, the wastewater gets treated in the wastewater plants, it goes into the rivers. And in stormwater events, when all the system is overloaded, the, the wastewater goes directly into the Neckar. Um, because of this, the, the bu bureaucracies or the, the, um, the department for, what is it exactly, health, I think, of, um, of the region of Stuttgart um, and the Land Baden-Württemberg saying, okay, the water quality is not good enough. Now we have a lot of research read and there are new also European standards which are applied for rivers because rivers have a very like uh, shifting water quality depends on how much water goes in. So this was never analyzed before in, in the Neckar, how actually, how many days of the year it's maybe good or is it always bad? So we decided to do it ourselves. Since May 13th, you can see it here, our first few measurement results. We let a laboratory um, measure the quality for us every day. They testing the two main uh, measures for swimming quality uh, standards, um, European standards. And here you can see very nice, we made kind of a um, um, traffic light um, symbol. On the left, on May 13, actually, the water quality was super good. You see the line, like the the, um, the line going through, is the water flow in uh, in the Neckar. So where it's not a lot of water flow, just the standard, we have actually very good water quality. Um, all the standards are kept met. Then we see ah uh, we had some more rainfall and uh, the the standards got slightly nah. Uh, they were nearly met, just slightly over it. And then this heavy, heavy um, stormwater event happened. I mentioned at the beginning, and you see the quality got so bad. We have a lot of bacteria in the water. It's really, really bad. And now you can see already how it's going down again. So we can also understand now how the, the dynamics are and how long after the st stormwater event it takes to get back to normal. So we're really... And curious about the next measurements. We will do them until October and then we know more. Tiny excursion. So, uh, continuing with our short term uh, goals, we are also aiming for exchange in this, um, in the Neckar Insel. And exchange, we are um, basically focusing. In, for example, in this picture, we see uh, the uh, French fries. And this is actually in the German culture, very important or very uh, significant because here um, the feeling of having uh, French fries near the water brings already this feeling of being able to take a bath in the water or bathing in the water. Uh, this is a very pool or out outdoor pool feeling. And we are trying to um, to do the same for the insult, to bring people together, to have this feeling that they are closer to the water and they will uh, at some point be able to have the same feeling of being in an outdoor pool, being so close to the water. This is um, These are events that we are creating uh, to bring people together, not only because of the French fries, but also to talk about, to uh, open discussion. And everyone, as you can see in the other picture in the right, uh, we are here, uh, people from the Verein from Neckar Insel, which are uh, developers, architects, designers, plus we also have um, the water police, the maritime authorities, uh, and some other actors uh, that have some knowledge on the water where, um, yeah, we can open discussions with them. Uh, and these discussions are also a little bit more formal in other times when we are organizing uh, events for uh, like seminars for exchange, direct exchange of water uh, content or some other discussions that are a little bit more informal with just anyone who wants to visit us and know a little bit more of us uh, or a little bit more uh, on the Neckar Insel. Plus uh, we are having also our internal exchanges. So every year we meet uh, in November, actually, when all of the summer activities of the Insel are over, and we are kind of like gathering everything together. We meet all of the uh, collaborators of the NECA Insel to bring all of this, uh, all of what they have gotten, the information that we have gotten in the summer 
to bring it all together and start preparing for the next year to make conclusions, to see what could, could have done better, how can we can improve certain um, events that we have organized in the previous year. And yeah, this is a, a very good example of actually how can we uh, also exchange from our different backgrounds um, to help organize for the next years. Uh, plus we are also doing some um, uh, lobby in other events, um, so we can uh, also uh, explain a little bit from our uh, world of the Necker Insel to uh, other actors that are related to the water in the city or outside of it. And we also have as a short term uh, goal, the experience and the experience is how we how we act in the insel, how we are in going in the insel. And um, for example, we are trying to create these events where we can experience the insel, we can experience the space next to next to the water, as we probably have not done before here in Stuttgart. So it's not very likely to see uh, these kind of pictures where we have everyone gathered next to the water, where we have a space for them, where we are providing them with a, uh, a safe space to be next to the water. Plus, we also hold some um, uh, art installations or happenings, like you can see here, um, where we had this installation uh, about water next to the Neckar, or yeah, when we have some other uh, installations. Uh, again, we are a very uh, mixed uh, group of people working in the Verein, which means that we can also develop projects that are uh, coming from different fields, like this one from uh, coming from uh, one of our collaborators that included somehow like a mattress where we filled it with uh, uh, nectar water. And this gave the feeling for people to kind of like experience the closest have a close experience to the nectar, to the nectar water, uh, in a different way that they could do as just simply going inside of it, which is, uh, as we said, it's not allowed, unfortunately. Uh, or this other event that we had also, uh, which was trying or uh, having the nectar water um, as a drinking element which also, again, this is an experience that we don't have all the time. And this is also what people appreciate a lot from the Neckar, because these are things that you cannot do every time in, in, in the city. And uh, yeah, here we land in one of uh, the biggest experiences, and one of the ones that hold more uh, attention in media uh, for the Neckar Insel and for the Neckar in itself, which is the critical NAS. Uh, kind of like a word that we mix with the critical mass, which is this demonstration event uh, in bikes that is usually taking place in the cities. So we took this word or this uh, critical mass and changed it to critical NAS, which is the word uh, that uh, in, in German is the word for um, wet. Uh, so we are basically um, doing the same thing, but in the water. Um, so we have uh, we are organizing this event especially in the summer and the, at the ends of the month usually and this is an open event when uh, where people just have to sign up and come uh, for uh, to us in the insel and then we provide them with a whole program of uh, the day where we can go inside of the of the water in a group and have experience being in the water, which is one of the main things um, uh, that we offer by this event. Uh, also having the safety to be in the water with a bigger group. Um, and also, I mean, the fun and the different uh, way to experience the NECAR. Um, as we, um, as I said, this is an event that is fully organized. So we have also the water police with us. Uh, and the Mar maritime authorities are also giving their permission to uh, uh, for us to do this. And yeah, this is a way a picture that shows basically what we want to achieve as an experience as experience in the Neckar. It's a very natural 
way to see how we can experience it with people in the water, with people in the um, green areas. And yeah, I mean, it's our goal that we can just simply do this change of being here and then being in the river in the uh, very future, jumping in the river even, and having this exchange or circular uh, use of the space. Yes, before we jump over, just because I'm seeing this picture now and recognize it's very nice to show also, like it's like you can see how we used the space, which is already there. We did the containers, but all you see here, we didn't change anything. We just brought the people there because the island is usually not accessible. Um, it's a part of the shipping department. I will tell more about in a bit, but it's a great moment where you see like people are hanging out here and it's also a perfect space to explain the role of the Neckar because here you see this concrete structure um, going into the Neckar and this is actually the, the spot where the overflow is of the sewing system, the main sewer of Stuttgart. When there is a stormwater event, the water comes out directly here next to our island. So we can explain that and people can connect the role of the Neckar and still experience it as like this livable space. Yes. Um, after you've seen a lot of uh, pictures, what we're doing now, some diagrams, how we're organized and funding, just funded just as a background information, how this all happens. Um, we try to organize ourselves as good as possible. We have as within our organization, the open island is the main thing. As I said, the island is usually not accessible. It is used uh, by the federal shipping department for shipping industry. But exactly this area you saw now, we activate, they didn't really need. It was kind of abandoned space. So we came into contact with the shipping department and they allowed us to use it. And um, now we are in charge when we open it. So it's still not always open to the public, but we as an organization open it every Sunday for everybody from April to October, because in the winter, the weather is too bad for that. So this is our main uh, format, we can say. And then we have different teams looking in all these different aspects into developing the space, uh, creating new knowledge, um, organizing events like the critical mass or um, events for exchange, if you've seen, as you've seen before. And on the right, you see, we always not only organize within our organization, often there are other initiatives or institutions who come up with an idea how to um, activate the island, make an event, and then we're also happily cooperating with them when it suits our idea of uh, something related to water. <laughs> and of course we have in the back how we organize it. We meet, meet every week, every Wednesday on the island or when the weather is bad somewhere else to organize, to coordinate. Then once a month we make a care day to take care that the island is kind of clean and good. Uh, we take care of our filtering plants you've seen on the rooftop of the containers. And as Emma already said, like once a year, we have a retreat, we like reflect on everything and plan the next year. And then, of course, we have different teams that are organizing the different aspects to keep the organization running from member administration to creating the amazing communication design. Here are some main events. When did we start and where do we hopefully go in the next years? Just some highlights you can see in 2020, we already started. Um, the project started with um, a university project. Um, I did with some friends who are also part of the team. And then we had some first public events on the island. We got, as I said, the contract um, and then made a contract with the Federal Shipping Authority. In 2023, they then made a really like official nonprofit organization accepted by the state. So now we are really like a formal institution, which is really good to get new fundings, an example. And yeah, we have our contract agreement until 2027. Then we will see what's happening. Um, the goal is that then the city takes over and makes it a public space. That's what we're working on and hope that we're going to make it so far. The city of Stuttgart is really happy about it. Um, about the funding, yeah, you can imagine it's not only all nonprofit. We have we got some money. We got a funding from the German government. 
um, after we initiated everything self-funded, basically, we got funding from the German government enough to pay for some positions um, to, to like coordinate the beginning, um, which was really cool. And now we have a new funding from the city of Stuttgart, they taking over that we can hire people who actually make very good professional communication work to make it a real learning space. Um, having schools, an example on the island, this needs um, professional infrastructure. So we're happy that we got new funding to um, hire people for that. And then we have for some projects like the critical mass, sometimes we need money to buy new material on a boat. We have a tiny boat for ourselves. And uh, this we can also make with smaller fundings. Then, um, yeah, at, in the introduction was already mentioned, we also funded a tiny company um, actually to do this because between starting the event until we made this official nonprofit organization, which now took over the lease, the, the contract with the federal shipping department, but also stuff like insurance. In between, we founded a small company out of our master thesis. So here you can see this. We also like through this company, we were managing the money coming from the government, putting it into the initiative. And now everything for NECA Island is in the hands of the nonprofit organization. And we as uh, like the tiny startup team, we got also new funding from the German state too. And this is really exciting for us to take what we've learned from the island into the region. What I mean with this, I will uh, maybe explain a bit in first the network we cooperate with. Um, you see, it, we have a lot of different bubbles of cooperation partners from different um, um, yeah, local institutions, federal institutions, also schools and universities or art and cultural institutions, as we've heard before, and also a lot of other initiatives. And here you can see our firm, the agency Apero, acting a bit like as a connector between um, the bigger planning and um, the activities of the nonprofit organization on the left tiny picture of us, just for context. So what do we do now? Um, this aim of we want to swim, we are powerful acting as a NECA Island team to hopefully make this possible. But in, this is all embedded in this idea of a really like redesign of the NECA. And this is something we cannot do as a nonprofit organization. We have to do it, of course, together with the officials um, in all the different federal levels we have in Germany. So with the new funding, we're working together with the um, region of Stuttgart to think about how can we activate and or make an integrated water planning to take what we've learned from the island into other uh, moments and into other cities um, in the region. So here we jump back to our map where we saw like our potentials of the river and the island in the middle. Um, okay, we abstracted a bit. And we already found some very interesting spaces, which are really interesting to activate as well in the region in different, um, around different water bodies. And now with these other cities, we will cooperate and we'll try to answer some questions um, how we can, yeah, as I said, like um, activate similar potentials like on the island, like questions like how can we activate synergies between the goals of, the municipality, um, which on a recreational level, and as well as with ecological development. So where's the balance? How can we maybe um, use the money for both of us in the same time to find synergies in the spatial development? Um, how we can make also with very small spatial interventions, which are hopefully cheap and affordable also for smaller um, cities to intervent, uh, to, um, to implement uh, what could this be, how we can develop methods, spatial methods to make it easy. Um, other questions like here also does this conflict between local recreation and nature conservation, how can we relate in between this and how like creating a more sense within the community around it within the municipality um, shaping a new knowledge, like what we've did on the island or doing on the island, how can we maybe um, achieve a healthy development for all of us, us and nature, basically. 
Of course, how can a civil society be better involved in all these official planning processes, what we're really interesting at, interested in? Um, and oh, as I said, like all these different spots we like discovered already, which are interesting, not all of them, but may, some of them are also kind of abandoned spaces like the Neckar Island, which are really easy to be reactivated. So we're looking specifically into that as well. Yes, with this kind of like outlook into what we're doing next, um, we're finishing our intro and we're really happy to hear your questions and discuss. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Christine and Elmer, for that wonderful presentation. Um, we'll go ahead and turn it over to the question and answer portion. So please feel free to continue putting your questions in the chat. And it looks like we already have a few in there. So we'll just kick it off with a question from Jennifer. Um, in addition to wastewater after storms, is the Neckar impacted by upstream farmland runoff, um, such as animal waste and crop fertilizers? Yes, but um, we are not sure how much, how intense. This is actually something we have to still look at. Um, but definitely, yes, we can say it's, it's an issue as well. I think it's not that intense as in other regions because there's not that much farmland like on the, um, on like the upper stream. upstream, exactly. But yeah, still to do, to figure out more about that. Thank you. Um, next is a question from Monica. You mentioned that stormwater runoff is leading to water quality issues. I'm curious, do you know if Germany has regulations and or financial incentives to advance stormwater capture and reuse? If not, do you foresee it being a part of the integrated water plan? We definitely see it as a plan. Uh, it's it's a big question, right? Like um, there is the German government is putting right now new laws and also fundings together for climate adaptation in general. And one topic is definitely like uh, stormwater management uh, strategies, like thinking about the sponge city, <laughs> uh, it's called. Um, but I think this is a very, very long and big process and it's not very directed into this direction enough. So this is why we feel like we need to make much more political talks. We try to make lobby work, positive lobby work on, on this matter. Because there are there are investments, but not in the scale we needed. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess somewhat connected with that um, question at the local scale, are you seeing any other programs already in place um, to advocate for this or even just residential programs um, focusing on stormwater capture um, or stormwater pollution reduction? Yeah, there are different initiatives and plans, but it's more like small intervention. I don't know, Elmer, you have something in mind? Uh, no, I mean, in every development that is being right, done right now around the city, uh, the topics of water and rainwater is being integrated, but still mm -hmm. we have to wait until these developments are finished and see these projects, how they are implemented, if they are actually working. Yeah. 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 True. I think a big like in new development, it's definitely there and definitely implemented. But the city is already built, so yeah. ninety nine percent we is coming from the existing city, and to transform the city, there is not a lot of effort. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And this is a huge problem, I think, in general, because it's also, of course, very difficult to change the entire sewing system instead making of making a mixed. Uh, water um, sewing system into like the divided one where the rainwater is treated different. It is a huge infrastructure pro a very huge gigantic yeah. project. So new development done in existing? Not. Not really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we have that issue as well. But then we do also have, again, as I mentioned, that that residential side of it as well. So very localized personal mm -hmm. actions that you can be taking. That's interesting. Yeah. You. In Stuttgart, there are a lot of a lot of cool, tiny initiatives and nonprofit organizations making very nice projects within their districts. 
um, which is really cool. And this is also why we think what we want to integrate in this integrated water planning, because this is a huge potential um, of also showing and, and growing acceptance for this change, right? So we see this as a huge potential to like push into the big development at one point. Um, our next question is from Diane. Does your organization use your collected water quality data to ask local government to control or alter factors that cause poor water quality? That's that's what we aim for. Yeah. Because so far, the, it's, it's a bit um, tricky because the problem is the, um, swimming in the Neckar in Stuttgart is prohibited because the water quality is bad. But because it's prohibited and it's not a bathing or swimming water body they also don't measure the water quality to check if it's actually bad so it's kind of a bureaucratic like loophole <laughs> we try to break up by testing ourselves and then like yeah. going into discussions with politicians and the different departments responsible for them and for that we need uh, for sure a little bit more of time and a little bit more of testing uh, to have kind of a, a whole history and uh be able to ask the city, hey, yeah. we have the right amount of uh, good quality days. Let's do this. Yeah. And then basically our goal with this measurement is to ask them to measure it more precisely, also to like ask uh, like about the question with the farmland um, fertilizer issue. This is going also like maybe beyond our work, but we want the city and the officials to test it very good. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that's really interesting, the fact that there wasn't prior testing, which is something that has become prevalent in the United States, even down to, you know, the, what we call citizen science here to be mm -hmm. able to know, you know, that localized water quality. Are you seeing that in other regions and, and watersheds in Germany where there is more comprehensive water quality collection? Yes, it is. It usually starts with initiatives. Uh, of course, where it's like a strong um, network of um, people who are interested in and then they initiate and then it actually leads always to bigger things. Um, and there have been in, in extensive studies also. There has been a project in another river, the Ruhr in Germany, where they eventually actually implemented like a kind of a traffic light system in the river, like how we showed it, like this day was actually good. So they have really a kind of a tiny beach on the river with such a traffic light where you can see water quality. Okay, good, bad. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Um, continue to put questions in the chat and, and Dale also hop in if you have any questions as well. Yeah, I just wanted to, you made reference to this master's thesis and I was wondering if you could share a little bit more information or detail or perspective about what it was, how it functioned. The impression that I have is, is that you're working with one of the local universities and maybe some of their faculty or students who are designers or architects or planners to come up with um, plans, maybe even actually work on on, on some of the, the, the structures uh, or other aspects of the island's revitalization. And then it, it intrigued me because um, Mm -hmm. It's something I could see some of our local colleges and universities maybe doing with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, our um, university project was kind of asking the big picture. We ask why we cannot swim. Why is the NECA looking how it's looking and not different? Um, so it uh, we studied architecture at the Art Academy in Stuttgart. So we kind of stretched the boundaries within the Art Academy, making a master thesis as a team. And also topic-wise, we did it um, within the thesis, which is in the architecture field, um, a very long research. We had a lot of interviews, asked all the officials, what are you doing? What's going on? What are the plans? Um, and then over the time with the interviews, all the knowledge we gathered, um, also like all the spatial aspects, we were really interested, like who owns the land of the Neckar, the Neckar is owned by the shipping department, but all the, you saw it a bit in the map, you have in example stakeholders like Mercedes-Benz owns a very long strip along the Neckar. So who is owning all of the space and were, how is this related to the development of the Neckar? So we ask all these questions. And then we recognized, okay, the main problem is lack of knowledge exchange and discussion. 
And then it came up the idea with the with the French fry kiosk we saw, which was a perfect tool to get people together and to discuss it. So and the island also being like as a space then to get activated um, into this discussion because like as from the architecture perspective, we were really interested in the space and we think we need a space where we can get started, where we can connect the people and where people can experience what's this. And the island was the perfect spot. And out of the project, we were like, here's an island, this is great. Um, there was an article in the local newspaper and then we got the connection into the shipping department because of the head of the shipping department read this article, which was convenient. He then called basically us, not the other way around. It was a very happy event. <laughs> So, so the origins of this go back to your your own academic interests yes. and academic pursuits. Yes, that's fantastic. It's great. Yeah, and I, this is why, like before we discussed of it, I think it's really great if you think like what the potentials you can do within universities because we have the time. We like the we have to yeah actually the time to do something like this, and that we then get in, afterwards into this cooperation with the officials. I think it was a very lucky um, coincidence that all of this came together. If I could just follow up, you know, you mentioned in one of the slides the there's this European bathing network, and you make uh, there's a little bubble with a reference to Flussbad Berlin. This past weekend there was an article in the Washington Post about sort of similar concepts, making our own Potomac River swimmable by drawing some from some of these lessons. And I was wondering whether you could share a little bit more about what your own experiences with adopting some of the lessons across Europe have been. And, um, and then also maybe sharing a little bit more detail about this uh, extension of your own work to other parts of, of the region, other tributaries, um, other other efforts to, to, to make the tributaries swimmable. Mm -hmm. I think something we can say is that um, network help in a lot of things. An example that we're doing the water quality testing now, we had a lot of exchange with the initiative Flussbad Berlin, who have like really nice experts on that, who are like, we talked with them, they explained us how it works. So they like, we had a lot of influence from, from different sites, an example, um, which is great also like the, the um, how how do I want to phrase this? Uh, we got motivated from them. Look, it works when you do it because they have done it already in their cities. And then it's always really interesting. You see the different um, local problems, I would say. And this is really interesting to then exchange because we can show others an example how we succeeded. Because um, as I said, the Neckar is uh, owned by the shipping department. And I can tell you this it was really great for us um, because like usually when you make something in public space in, in a city, you have tons of different departments who are then responsible. When you make something in the city center, you have to communicate and agree with like five different departments of the city only. It is a mess. And then you have to depend on that all of them are into supporting and find it cool. And in this case, it's just like one department. It's the federal shipping department, which is even like above the city. So the head of the shipping department were like the one decision maker and he made this happen with us. And this is something we now can tell and say like, guys, if you want to do something, check go to a shipping lane because then you have one stakeholder and then the process can be much easier. When this is a cool person or they're sitting two cool people, then this is a huge potential for development. Great. An example. Um, we do have, let's see, um, another question in the Q&A. What types of events or activities do you see holding for children to have them experience the island and the river? Yeah, well, um, one of the things actually to know is that um, the island right now, we kind of like have the responsibility of it, meaning that uh, kids will also, we will have to have the responsibility for them. This is one of the things that we are right now uh, also figuring out uh, security and everything. But on the other hand, we're also involving in the part of knowledge, for example, we're involving uh, new projects with schools 
Uh, so kids can come here in the insel and experience the water, get the knowledge, maybe even um, in some class that is related to the water, have some uh, research on it, do some experiments, of course, get the information from our side. Um, yeah, so the involvement is definitely on the side of knowledge first. And in the future, we want to also make it a super uh, show, uh, safe space for the kids and everything, and for everyone in general. Yeah. yeah. You can see kids are already there. Yes, <laughs> with their coming. parents, they're always coming on exactly. Sundays. <laughs> with parents and as like families come a lot yes. on Sundays and even on the critical mass on the stand-up paddles like if you have experienced parents they also bring their children we have like vests for them that they are safe and yeah. that they also can join that's awesome um so we have just a few minutes left so please feel free to continue putting any final questions in the chat I think um, one thing that I was kind of curious about was that approval process um, with the Federal Maritime Authority. Um, you know, how was your experience, you know, creating that agreement? Was there any initial pushback to opening up the island or were they pretty amenable or agreeable to it? Yeah, as I said, we were really lucky. The head of the shipping department, like it's not like it's really just for the we say Binnenschifffahrt, only for the rivers within the mainland, they are responsible. And the head of the Neckar, basically, um, of the department of the Neckar, he is like, he was really amazed by the idea. He loved it. And it was super easy because he was, he is a bit close to retirement. And I think he proved probably everything that he could do. And now he was really curious to make this experiment with us. So we had a lot of discussions with him. How can we make it in a way that is good for, safe for us? Because we have to take responsibility because the department is not responsible for public space. So they like were like, okay, we cannot really do it, but let's figure out how we can do it together. And it was super easy. We the, Making the contract with the shipping department was like, like wow. <laughs> it was really easy it was more complicated than to find an insurance that would insure us <laughs> in this context that was a process but we were really lucky with the official stuff um we had a moment where the city of stuttgart got interested because we put these containers so the city was like ah one moment you're building something you need a building permit <laughs> and then it shortly got very difficult but then the head of the shipping department invited the um, um, mayor for housing and building and for environmental protection on the island. Then we had a talk, how we organize it, and then we could figure things out very easily again. It's really, we're really lucky. Wow. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I'm not sure you'd see it that easily in the United States to get approval. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I think we have maybe one more question in the chat and then we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, and this is kind of broader scale. Um, linked to this, can you discuss how this project fits into the European Union water directives? Do you have any insights on this? What do you mean with how it fits in? Um, David, I would welcome you um, to come off mute if you're interested. Let's see if he is still on there. Um, I'll allow him to talk if he wants to um, provide any further. David, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, really what I was wondering is um, there's a whole lot of water directives that have come through the EU um, on river cleanliness, um, what kind of things can be, level, what levels can be polluted um, what pollutants you can have in rivers and so forth. I was wondering how is this project, particularly if you're monitoring the level of liver pollutants now, I mean, how does this fit into the directives? Um, does it help Stuttgart further link themselves into the EU directives? Um, does it help um, illustrate the faults with of those directives? Um, um, does it, if you see what I mean, just how does it link in um, I mean, particularly, how can you inform the fall failures of the EU directives? Because clearly, if Stuttgart's water, if the water in this river is, is polluted to the point where people can't swim in it, the directive isn't working. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's a very good question. And we also were like really like discovering that. Um, like the water quality 
is, yeah, as we just said, like it's the big problem of the stormwater events and like when there's an extreme overflow. Uh, but the interesting thing is there is, as you say, the EU regulation, there is the so-called Wasserrahmenrichtlinie is the German term for it. It's yeah, the water regulation. And the the aim of this regulation is to like not only like keep the worst dirt and chemistry out of the rivers, but to make them ecologically like live like active again because like a lot of rivers are more or less dead rivers and this is really interesting because it took uh, was uh, implemented in 2000 i think and they it was supposed to be implemented by the countries and like change a lot until 2015 and it didn't happen because all the states including germany including stuttgart and the region couldn't do didn't do enough for um, meeting this new standards of this um, this new uh, this new standard, so the 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 time the deadline was pushed from this again and again and again and again, and now for now it's like two thousand also twenty seven I think, but it doesn't look like it's already clear it's not gonna happening. So this is something we talk about when we make our let's call it lobby work talk with officials in the different levels and tell them guys it's not like just we want to swim <laughs> it's it's within this bigger picture and we also try to convince that like see if we talk about the swimming we can activate a lot of people because it's a fun like everyone wants it but if we take all the measures that we can swim in the Neckar, Neckar we also meet these ecological standards from the European Union, an example. So we really try, try to use it also to like get officials like, like more active. Great, thank you. Um, well, I see that it is 12.58, so we will go ahead and wrap up here. Um, you can see their website still on the screen um, if you want to learn more or contact them. But Christine and Elmer, thank you so much again for a great presentation and sharing all this really insightful information. Um, again, this webinar will be posted on NBRC's YouTube page as well as our website. Um, and please stay tuned for future webinars throughout the year. Um, with that, uh, thank you all and have a great afternoon.